are struggling to aim and move in Warzone and you need a little bit of help, I got the best controller settings for you to use. And not only am I going to tell you that, let me show you some clips and get right into the settings. Don't get up until I tell you to get up. W discipline, bitch. Oh, you don't keep ego chowder like you basically playing me like I'm you right now. Boom, buck lot. And my won't stay tixi. Push me, push me, bitch. I'm gonna either live or die. So let's expedite this shit. I'm gonna either live or die. So let's expedite this shit. I'm gonna either live or die. So let's expedite this shit. So let's expedite this shit. Now let's get into the best controller settings for Warzone for aim and movement. If you want that buttery, crispy movement like I got, smooth, very accurate aim like I got. Let me go ahead and show you. Now I started a profile match with some bots just to give you some little pointers, show you little mechanics, just show you how I move around and everything, and to kind of explain the way I play. Now to get into it, I play controller. If you don't know, I use a PS5 controller. I don't play claw. I don't use paddles. I just have a very specific way that I play. Now to go ahead and show you the button layout. Um, so if you don't know, I play tactical. What tactical is, you use R3 to basically do all your sliding, your diving, your crouching, proning, <clears throat> anything that changes your stance, you use for L3, I mean R3 instead of circle or whatever the other button is that you use. But where it gets tricky, I use L3 to jump. Now you're probably like wondering like, why would you do that? Because a lot of people use X or a bumper, a lot of people also play claw, so it kind of works in their realm that they can just use their finger to tap X or whatever. But let me show you. So you're moving, you're moving. So instead of me taking my hand off my controller, I can literally jump, fly cancel, jump, jump, without ever taking my finger off of the controller. So I can aim, I can jump, I can aim, jump everything while using this and it takes a little getting used to but for me i found this work because my brain when trying to use paddles it's kind of, <laughs> kind of messed up man it takes a little getting used to with almost any play style it takes just a little getting used to but it's just to show you why i use l3 to jump so anybody thinking like oh whoa why oh whoa, that's kind of weird that's the reason why now let's get more into the other settings to get more into the button layout, this is just simple. I use the top buttons instead of the bottom triggers. So I basically shoot with, with R1 and I aim in with L1. So as you can see, I die right here. I aim in with the top and I shoot with the bottom. To me, I've been playing on PS3 since I really actually started getting into gaming. So that was just the best. I've, I've stuck it out from PS3 all the way on to now since I'm on PC. PS4, PS5, all of that. <clears throat> but nevertheless, that's enough with the button layout. Bumper pings are off. Stick layout preset. Make sure this is on default. I don't know why you would ever change this. But some people like to mess with their sins a lot. So I say keep that on default. Controller vibration. Now this may be, this might be preferential, but turn it off. I don't see how anyone can play with the vibration on. In my honest opinion, I feel like you're a lot more accurate with it off. But that's, again, that's just me. But a lot of higher skill players and even just average and mid-tier players, they uh, a lot of them turn the controller vibration off because they all think the same thing. Now, for the trigger effect, make sure this is off. Um, now, dead zones. Luckily, we have a dead zone stick test in the game, so you can kind of get a drift, of, a, a, a gist of where you should put your dead zone. Me, personally, I kind of have a newer controller with not a lot of a stick drift at all, so I have the luxury of keeping this at zero. <clears throat> keeping this at zero makes your move your input like so much better you you're very snappy with everything you do especially if you're a higher sense player i am a lower sense player but you're a lot more snappy with a lot of the stuff that you do i'm on pc also with an overclock controller well this controller actually is pre overclocked because the dual sense edge like literally has zero like off the box like even on ps5 it has zero millisecond response time so it's not even that i'm running an overclock controller but i do have that extra step but regardless, it makes your aim just very snappy. Your movement's very snappy. As soon as I move this button a little bit, you see? I'm, I'm barely tapping the button and I'm moving. I barely move this. Micro adjustments. Help you make those just micro adjustment aim. 
and movements. Now, to get into the aim settings, this is the, this is the bread and butter right here, because I know a lot of people on my Twitch chats, a lot of people probably even in the videos wondering, what is his sensitivity? Now, as you can see, it's not very high. I mean, it says high, but we all know high is like 14, 14, 20, going insane. That's high. This is a lot more calm. See, in a general sense, I can still move my ramp up time. You can tell it ramps up a little bit, but it's not nothing that you can't control. Just very smooth, up, down, side to side. I like to have it a lot lower because you can make very smaller but sn snappier um, adjustments. And you can also, <clears throat> you can also just move a little bit more. When it's high, it's like it's too high to the point where you can't make gradual snappy movements unless you can really control it. But I just found playing it at a lower sense just helped me stay a lot more accurate. Now, I don't know if this is placebo or not. I really can't tell you if it is placebo or not, but I found this out from, uh, if you know who Zyro is, he's a content creator. Like I said, it may be placebo. I don't see why this would work, but changing this back down to 1.0 so basically what you do is you go to your stick sensitivity, go to custom, change this back to 1.0 because it's I think it's default at 1.20 and then go back to your regular sense. So I'm on 7.7, change it back to 1.0. Try it out. I don't know if it actually does anything, but you may find some success and it may be, you're like probably like, wow, that's a lot better. I can actually aim. I don't know. But nevertheless, to go on, my ADS sensitivity multiplier is at 0.90 now you can go lower i wouldn't go past 1.0 0 0.90 is kind of where i found the best for me in this game i usually run like a 0 0.8 0 0.75 i even went as low as 0.65 but as you can see this is me aiming just regularly like moving around my sensitivity and this is it's a it's a bit slower it probably doesn't look that much it is 0.90 so it's almost the same as the seven sensitivity with our horizontal and stick but you can tell it's, it's still a lot slower especially when i get that slow down on the aim assist and i'm gonna talk about the aim assist in, 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 in a bit but that's just to show you that <clears throat> that is my uh, ads sensitivity multiplier and that it just helps you to stay a, a little bit more accurate while you're ads now this i don't mess with this is for third person vehicles i haven't really messed with this so i just leave that at default this leave it at default don't touch it tax stands sensitivity multiplier if you like the tax stance and you want to change it up, I still say probably go like 0.9, maybe 0.8, or I say go 0.10 down from what your usual um, ADS sensitivity multiplier is at. So for me, I run 0.9, so go 0.8. Now, <clears throat> aim response curve type. This is kind of an important one. I will say dynamic is the best to play on for almost any skill level. Dynamic is literally the best. You get the strongest rotational aim assist. And let me show you what rotational aim assist is. Essentially, when I'm aiming at somebody and I use that left stick and it just kind of rotates, it kind of rotates my character even, even though I'm not, I don't even have my hand on the right stick. It's just rotating my character. Just rotating my character. It rotates my character. I'm not, I'm not even using the right stick. So dynamic has the best for that. Now, I am a linear stepper a linear lieutenant i don't know why i really do like linear i feel like i have a lot more control over my aim in certain cases but also i am more of a higher skill player so i can adjust to my raw inputs but for all play styles and what i what i still run to this day is dynamic and now this aim response curve slope i can't really break it down to you and i'm gonna make a, a another video when i really can because i don't want to just give you a setting and I'm really uneducated on it. But for the now, I tested this out and I found that putting this down at 0.5 and running this at dynamic, oh my God, it makes a very big difference. Um, you can still run it at 1.0 and you can also do your own testing and come back to me and also let me know, hey, we did some testing and this is the best for the aim response curve slope scale. But 0.5, even I think I ran it at 0.4, Oh man, you're gonna be beaming with this. But leave it at 0.5 for now at least. Um, on to the next setting. The focus, I just leave it at one. I believe this is for snipers. Yep, while well, ADS and focusing. So if you have a, a scope on your gun that allows you to focus, 
I just leave it at 1.0 because it is a sniper. You could put it down to your regular 0.9, but I leave it at at that because whatever. ADS sensitivity transition timing, keep it at instant. Um, if you're one of those people that want to customize your sensitivity per zoom, go ahead. Me personally, I just leave it all at 0.9 because I just like to keep it the same for each one and I just micro adjust to it. Target aim assist, if you're not running target aim assist, I don't know what to tell you because there's no way you're playing this game without it, unless you're on mouse and keyboard. Aim assist type, you can toggle in between default and black ops. I would not trust precision or focusing. Do not use them, despite what they tell you, do not use them, but default and black ops. Now, <clears throat> I can't tell you the difference between the two, it just the default is traditional for modern warfare games if you're a modern warfare stepper and you like the way the aim assist feels on those games cool if you're a black ops stepper and you like like cold war bo4 games like that and you like that traditional black ops aim down sight then i say go with, with the black ops aim down sight it all comes down to preference i don't think either one is better than the other i just feel like it's better to whoever whoever like those games if, if you're used to those aim assists Third person ADS correction type. I just keep that at assist. I don't even know what that is. Most assistive behavior off and keep that off. Now, for the movement side of things, because we just went down through our accuracy. Now for the movement and gameplay options, this is the bread and butter right here. So automatic tax sprint, believe it or not, I keep it on auto tax sprint. If you play claw or something, I can't give you the exact settings because I don't play claw. I don't know anything about claw. Um, but for the most part, I run auto tax sprint because as soon as I push the stick forward, I'm in sprint. I don't have to click down because especially that I jump with L3, I can't click down and run. I just have auto tax sprint so that when I push this stick up, boom, I'm moving. All right. So run auto tax sprint. It just helps with the movement a lot better. Now, Slide maintain sprint. Basically, what this is 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 continue to sprint after performing your slide. And now this setting only applies when automatic sprint is enabled. So you need automatic sprint enabled in order to in in order to enable this setting right here. So basically, when I slide, boom, I'm still in sprint, regardless if it's tack or just if it's tactical sprint or just a regular little jog. As soon as I slide, I don't have to do anything else in order to move. I won't just move slower or forward. My slide maintains the sprint. All right. <clears throat> now, next attachment, auto move forward. I don't run this. Um, I don't feel like I have to. I can just move forward, stop with my stick. So just keep that at off. Uh, tactical sprint behavior, put it at single tap sprint. Therefore, the moment you tap that button or you move your stick, it auto tax sprint. Now, grounded mantle, automatic airborne mantle, automatic ground mantling, turn all of these off. Some of the mantling in this game, especially because it's automatic, no, we wanna be able to control when we mantle. Sometimes you still get like little mantling defects, but other than that, it's still just, it's general, it's basic, basic to turn this off. It's the best, I found it the best, especially when moving around and maneuvering around enemies, just turn these off. Slide dive behavior. Now I wanna get, go ahead and I wanna show you this real quick. So I have it on slide only, but let me show you something, all right? When you have it on tap to slide, it's a delay. So look, let me show you. You see? It's like a bit of a delay because what the game is trying to do is register, okay, is he sliding or do he wanna dive? You see? I'm running, I hold it, it's kind of a delay to dive. I hold, I, I run, delay the slide. Now, when you turn this off, you're gonna become, you're not gonna become a movement king, but you're on your way. So now, as soon as I turn it off and I put tap to slide, no delay, I can just slide. Now I can't dive anymore, but I got it on slide only. I feel like the slide canceling is way more effective than diving. That's the whole point of why we got movement in the first place. Slide canceling really changes the game. So, in my honest opinion, in your best interest, I say put it on slide only. If you still want to, if you can, if you can maneuver with the with the delay a little bit, because it's not that heavy. But if you like the delay, you don't mind it. I say run tap to slide so you can still dive, especially diving across from buildings like on Vondell, 
But I say just run slide only because you'll be moving the fastest. Underwater, now I say put this on trigger. Or no, matter of fact, you put plunging underwater on free. Uh, parachute auto deploy off. Sprinting door bash. This is so that when you sprint, you can just bash the door open instead of having a whole square. And you just boom. All right, there you go. Uh, layer slime behavior, I keep it on movement base. Aim down sight behavior, I have it on hold. Focus behavior, I have it on toggle. Equipment behavior, I have it on hold as well. Weapon mount activation. Now, I really don't care for weapon mount. I will turn this off in my honest opinion. But I just say use whichever one you feel like is the best for you. I don't even, I don't care to mount. So I just have it off. <clears throat> Tactical stance activation. You can also turn this off, but I have mine on ADS and a down button. Especially when you're going for camo challenges and zombies or multiplayer and you need that attack, attack stance activation. There you go. Um, on toggle. Now this is a very big important one for especially Warzone. You want to put this on prioritize interact. Therefore, it pro what well, well, it prioritizes that when I want to interact with something. So I want to press square, boom. It just happens instead of me having a hold square, which when you hold square with the prioritize interact and you're hovering over something to pick up, you hold square to reload in that situation and then you just press to pick up the weapon. That was perfect. I'm glad that gun was sitting right there on the floor. Armor plate behavior, you want to put on apply all so that you, pr you, you, when you're plating up, you hold triangle once and it puts all your plates on instead of one plate, then I got a whole triangle again, another plate, triangle again, another plate. Nope, it just does it all in one walk. Uh, ADS stick swap, do not change this at all. Backpack control, I guess this is preference, but mine is on the stick so that when I'm in my backpack, I move it with the stick and not the D-pad controls. Just a preferential, um, I feel like it's a preferential setting. You can use it however you like. Um, we're almost done here. We got the depleted ammo switch, so you can turn that on so that when your weapon is out of ammo it switches to your next gun and you're not just sitting there clink 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 looking at the enemy shooting nothing so i say put that on a uh, quick c4 detonation i have it on one by one manual fire behavior i have it on hold so therefore this is not the best example but when you have a burst fire weapon and actually i can show you that real quick let me put on the dg58 it's the best one to kind of give you to show you to show you why this setting is good so let me go ahead and uh eliminate myself real quick all right perfect so with the setting that we just talked about so this is a burst weapon so normally you you shoot you just keep pressing it what this setting does is allow me to oh, what this setting does is allow me to hold it with the burst weapon and i don't have to let go so therefore it's like an automatic weapon you just hold it. Perfect. Same with the pistol. It's slower, but I can hold the pistol and it's just going to shoot. I'm not letting go of the trigger at all. So I said, keep that on. That can only help you with something like a single fire pistol. Just spam it. Uh, obviously just spam it. But with something as fire as the DG 58. Yes. I prefer you to put this on hold. Now, vehicle behaviors, I don't mess with, but I got it on short delay, free look, and melee. Score, map, stats, behavior, toggle, ping, will, moderate, moderate, and hold. So, that is to go through all of the controller settings and to show you why I'm such a Warzone demon, man. Also, you can combo up with a little bit of things like I want to show you. If you don't know how to slide cancel, literally just... It's just all in the right stick and it's even it's even in the in in the X. So it's like multiple ways to slide cancel. I could double tap R3, I could R3 L3, I got R3 X. It's literally multiple ways that you can slide cancel. But it's pretty simple. Jump shot in, you just aim in, aim in while jumping. You could you could slide cancel into a jump shot. Slide cancel into a jump shot. Fly cancel into a jump shot. It's just a little more slower for right now. I feel like they're gonna buff it, but it's still great at the moment. Um, drop shot in, which you just drop. Literally use your prone change. For me, it's R3, but you may be circling. It may be another button for me. I just drop shot with that. Boom. 
but for the most part those are all the settings that you could possibly run for warzone and even mw3 just to be a movement demon man so if there's anything else you want me to test out drop them in the comment section also just a little bit of a, a game to play what controllers are you guys using in modern warfare 3 and for warzone are you running ps4 ps5 xbox are you on mouse and keyboard are you using a scuff battle beaver just drop your controllers in the comment section and see you guys later